Alright, so as you already know if you've been watching the previous videos, we've seen Sonic Frontiers thanks to the Gamescom demo. And you better be keeping an eye on these events because we've got Tokyo Game Show next week and then we got EGX the week after that. And as Zuko already said, we're not getting a public demo of Sonic Frontiers, at least not before the release of the game. So the demos is where we're gonna be getting all the interesting shit. Now, as you remember in the Gamescom demo, there was the public version which showed Kronos Island or the first island for 15 minutes is what they let each person play. And then they had the demo for the critics which gave them 30 minutes of access to the second island, Ares Island. And now one of those critics was able to do an interview with Izuka and we got a little bit more information regarding Sonic Frontiers as well as some classic adventure bait as you know Izuka loves to do that adventure baiting and this one the audacity okay <laughs> I've been seeing some, some gaming companies on some serious audacity shit like we, we have to get into this right now but if you're subscribed to the channel already please make sure to subscribe we are trying to hit 100,000 subscribers and hopefully 7,000 subscribers before Sonic Frontiers comes out so we've got two articles from every idol IT that's in the town website so we've used Google Translate so it's gonna be a bit shoddy but we're gonna give it our best was well, the translation software so we're gonna read it and decipher what they're saying here and huh oh Azuka it says here Sonic Frontiers the new island and gameplay choices we tried a new Sonic Frontiers island at Gamescom 2022 and chatted with the creative officer Takashi Azuka now I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because they obviously are gonna repeat a lot of the things we already know if you've been following the game you know most of the shit in the game but there's a few interesting points that we got to talk about so it says here the the good thing is that at least in the Ares Island, the variety of the playful offer, I think things offered to us to play, I don't know, seem to us wider than that of the island of Kronos. Puzzles and optional challenges, not to mention more guided and spectacularized situations by the scripts, led us to hope that the destiny and diversification of content of Sonic Frontiers will increase with the continuation of the adventure. So they're basically kind of saying here that there was more shit to do in Ares Island. Obviously, Kronos Island, the public demo that they're probably talking about, was like the first 15 minutes of the game. So you're probably not going to get as much content compared to being thrust into the second island for a whole part of the game that's not the beginning, which would probably be more interesting. Anyway, it says, I can't tell you how many levels there are, Izuka-san told us, but I guarantee you that Frontiers has the most content ever in a Sonic game. In in fact, we wanted there to be enough stimulation in the Starfall Islands, a good number of mini games and activities that would attract the attention of the player while exploring. In developing the maps, we therefore immediately thought of the point in which to place the puzzles, the ramps, and all those elements that could keep the user's curiosity alive. In the second area, the protagonist's task is to free the good knuckles, while in the first area, Amy was the prisoner, and to do so, she will not only have to collect all her, and then they go on some other stuff. I don't want to keep rambling. There's, there's a lot of things that are translation errors but the point is you save knuckles in island two you save amy in island one i'm guessing the other three islands you save other people tails probably one of them i don't know who the other two are but yeah basically they're saying there's going to be a lot of variety of things to do in aries island and then azuka goes on about how this is going to be the biggest sonic yeah, which is pretty believable because again kishimoto was saying 20 to 30 hours double that if you want to 100 which the average sonic game from the past was not that long unless you sucked like let's be real like obviously those games were hard but if you spent more than 20 hours beating Heroes or 06 or Adventure 1 or 2, I'm talking like main game, then you sucked, which is fine because most people suck the first time they play. But now that we're in the meta era, the games are easier. So back onto Frontiers. If this game is that long while playing well, which pretty much everyone's going to play well because the game doesn't seem that hard, then it's pretty much going to be the longest Sonic game. Yeah. As for how I feel about that, I mean, it, it doesn't matter to me too much. Obviously, I wanted a game that was at least 10 plus hours. But after that, I'm not too fussed. A lot of my favorite games are around that 10 plus hour mark even if they had to do stretchy shit to get there like heroes having multiple teams or 06 having you know multiple stories which use the same levels or those early open world games before they got really long you know like the assassin's creed Ezio trilogy like 10 to 20 hours kind of vibes maybe even less than 10 hours once you're good but yeah i'm not really fussed about whether the game is 50 hours or not that's not really my concern i'm more of a if it's really fun i'll replay it kind of thing do you know what i mean so that's not how you would sell the game to me but i am curious to see how they're going to fill this up because again 20 to 30 hours five islands you're looking at four hours plus per island there's got to be a lot of puzzles in there it can't be the same walking on the squares they gotta have variety in puzzles they talk about mini games there's gotta be variety in that platforming better be more than just rail switch for a few seconds and then into a hoop and then back on the ground and the combat I pretty much know what to expect with that so i don't expect that to be too much variety i mean i guess there'll be different enemies but we'll see what's in there once we play obviously but let me keep going it says the idea for the open zone was to take the typical elements of the classic
classic Sonic games and place them in a wider context. Alternate the rapidity, is that, a, that is a word, right? Of the high precision gameplay of the other chapters with the exploration of a larger setting where the player can feel free. In short, it is a new style of play. We know, however, that fans really love the more traditional approach. And this is for these reasons that within this context, we have also introduced the levels of cyberspace. The addition of similar stages, in our opinion, represents one of the most positive aspects of the entire production. It's kind of interesting how boost gameplay has become the traditional gameplay now because that was always the new gameplay you know i'm showing my age now but <laughs> that's kind of what it was you know the traditional gameplay was like the spin dash and the momentum and all that shit which they kind of converted to the adventure and then they slowly kept changing it until we got boost and now boost is now traditional sonic i guess that's that's all we've really known i mean aside from lost world the whole mayor was full of boost if we're looking at like sonic team now they go into the story here and it says this is a new way of telling the story more mature than in the past as can be seen from the tone of the story and the cuts of the cinematics we have witnessed. In this sense, the artistic choices discussed above also move. From storytelling to art design, everything is aimed at strangling Sonic. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if that's a translation error, strangling Sonic and whoever impersonates him. Okay. Now, Izuka says, in the previous chapters, everything had a familiar look. The user knew that the environment possessed the typical mood of the Sonic games and that the enemies to face were those of Eggman. So previous chapters means, I guess, previous games. In Frontiers, the explorable world is not um, the explorable world does not have particularly cheerful tones and everything contributes to creating that aura of mystery I told you about. Visual choices and sounds go hand in hand. The composer is the same as Sonic Forces, the Tomb of Otani. The intent is to mix the classic Sonic theme, and they're not talking about classic Sonic, you know, like 2D, they mean like just iconic Sonic, with those of the islands we will visit. Also on the musical level, the team has tried to achieve a balance between past and present with that touch of mystery that characterizes all the audio visual choices present in front tears. Sometimes the music emerges from nowhere, other times it fades, in some points it follows the hyperkinetic rhythm of the gameplay, and on other occasions it slows down to make room for environmental samples. So yeah, pretty much like an open world game, like they ramp up the music depending on what you're doing in the open world. If you're chilling, the music stops, if you're moving a little bit, then you've got the peaceful music, you're doing some action shit, then it ramps up. We've seen this before if you play open world games. But now is where things get interesting, because this is the same Azuka interview, but they split it into two articles. Obviously the first one was talking about how Frontier's gonna have the most content of any Sonic game and then Izuka hits us with this one. Sonic Adventure 3 is always in Izuka's dreams, but it takes a lot of money. Takashi Izuka, the boss of the Sonic team, always has said the same thing, Sonic Adventure 3. The topic comes up in almost all of his interviews, even if the subject of discussion is the brand new Sonic Frontiers coming out in November, which undoubtedly deserves all the attention. When our colleague from Dot .esports asked him what his biggest wish is, Izuka had no doubts. I was there for Sonic Adventure, I was there for Sonic Adventure 2, too, those are my games. I really want to develop new episodes of the Adventure series. The boss of the Sonic team, however, is immediately back with his feet on the ground since he says developing a new adventure would not be easy at all in the modern video game scenario. Considering all the games that are out there right now, I'm well aware of the expectations that a new Sonic Adventure could create. It would require a large investment from the company, a long development period, and a large amount of content to be able to say something in the current market. Will he ever be able to get financial support on the green light from Sega? But above all, would you play a new game of the adventure series which you remember being stopped since the second chapter dated 2001 let us know in the comments and this is one of those audacity moments okay like an audacity moment is like you don't remember boondocks like the nigger moment this is the audacity moment it's like when a company says something or does something that's like the audacity right like i was reacting to this ubisoft forward event last night and they said they were going to be showing like the new assassin's creed game ac mirage which by the way asian stone from the sonic movie is actually voicing the main character in that so now would be a good time to get into ac for those of you who've never touched it but they showed a cgi trailer for this game which games have done in the past shown cgi little teasers and not shown gameplay which the way they had that up you thought they were going to show gameplay because they announced like like five ac games but anyway they showed a cgi trailer for the game no gameplay and then at the end they said you could pre-order now they got the collector's edition ready deluxe edition like 130 bucks like i'm like you ain't show no gameplay and you <laughs> and you saying pre-order off of the cgi like that was an audacity moment and i'm getting a similar vibe here not on the level of what i just talked about but like for azuka to just go on the record and be like yo this is like the biggest game we've ever made sonic frontiers this is going to be longer more content than every single sonic game we made before and then be like <laughs> avenger 3 it's kind of going to require a large investment so we can't we can't do that shit like we're a bit you know we're a bit stomped here, you know, we're kind of broke, like, we, we, I don't know if we're gonna get the money for something like that, you know, it's kind of like buying a mansion and then being like, 
furniture i don't know if you've got the kind of the investment for some shit like that you know like so it's, it's a bit much <laughs> that's what it feels like because at the end of the day if you really wanted to do it you would be able to do it i mean i don't know why he's acting like adventure 3 is going to cost way more money than say a frontier so i mean at the end of the day even if adventure 3 was like 10 to 15 hours i'm sure a lot of fans would be happy with that if the quality was there right which is still less content than frontiers and i've said this before i said that frontiers could have been adventure 3 in terms of like the game in terms of the foundation of what they were going for had they just made a few little tweaks or improvements for example focusing more on momentum in the open world making it feel more like a playground like taking inspiration from like things like green or paradise or even the hot world to sonic adventure 1 you know replacing the coco with chow i'm just giving examples of how the foundation for sa3 is sitting on what frontiers is but because of the execution not being that great people would not be happy if they named it adventure 3 but yeah if you had like great cyberspace levels that were high quality and the open world had that playground feeling environment and the story was serious it could have gotten adventure 3 in terms of the title like it's pretty much teetering on that but because again execution not perfect people aren't going to be happy with that maybe they even consider calling adventure 3 who knows i got no idea maybe they want to see how frontiers does and then use the engine and the assets as a base for sa3 like again like i was talking about the assassin's creed leaks again on my non-sonic channel link in the description and they said they were going to remake the first assassin's creed game because it's 15 years since the first one but they're going to use the engine and the assets of Assassin's Creed Mirage, the one that's coming out next year, to help make that remake easier. So technically, I mean, they could use the base of Frontiers to make an Adventure 3. I mean, you'd have to improve the physics, level design that's more focused on momentum, maybe more challenge, maybe Cyberspace wouldn't be boost, you know, Coco replaced the Chow. They could use that foundation to make an Adventure 3 if they knew what they were doing. Whether they do or not, I don't know. But the point is, I just found it really interesting that they would bring that up and say the reason was not enough money. It just seems a bit tacky like just say you're not ready to do it yet and just leave it at that but be like yeah we can't we can't afford to even though we're just making the biggest game ever like i don't know it's pretty interesting but let me know what you guys think about all of this zuka said that frontier is going to be the biggest sonic game ever in terms of like the amount of content said the story is going to be more mature and said they can't afford to do sa3 they got no money or something like that <laughs> so are you guys looking forward to frontiers or looking forward to the story that we don't know that much about and of course a big shout out to all my channel members if you want to become a channel member click at the join button Next to the subscribe button, be yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. Make sure to check out the non sonic channel, the link will be in the description. But that's all I have to say right now. So, do me out.